Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the eTrailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 GMC Terrain. Now this is what the hitch is going to look like when it's installed and you can see right away that it has a nice matte black powder coat finish here so it looks really sharp and it's going to hold up to the elements. This is also a 2 inch by 2 inch design so that's going to be a really good one for a bunch of different accessories whether it be ball mounts, cargo carriers or bike racks. This is kind of this industry standard so you're really going to have a whole lot of options. Now something else you might notice or might not notice is the fact that the hitch is actually hidden except for the receiver tube opening and that's because because it is a hidden cross tube and that's going to give you a really clean look but still all the utility of a trailer hitch. Taking a closer look it's also going to have a 5 8 hitch pin hole and that's going to allow you to put your accessories in place and keep them in place. Now the hitch does not come with the pin and clip but a lot of times your accessories will actually come with them so that's something to think about when looking at accessories making sure they have them and if you ever wanted to move up to a locking version we have plenty of those available here at eTrailer and that way you can lock them in place you'll have a key and that way when you have your accessories loaded up no one's going to be walking away with them because they're locked in place. Now when you're towing, you may need to hook up your safety chains here and so you have a rolled style safety chain loop which is going to be great for your standard hooks and also even your larger clevis style should fit with no problem. Now speaking of towing, if you are going to be towing some trailers, you probably want to know what this is capable of and it's got decent numbers at a gross trailer weight rating of 4,500 pounds and that's going to be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it. Now it also has a pretty high tongue weight at 675 and that's going to be the pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So that's going to be your suspended accessories like your cargo carriers or bike racks. And, and that's going to be a pretty good number to cover pretty much whatever you throw it, assuming you don't overload the cargo carrier or bike rack. Now this can be used with weight distribution, but the numbers are going to stay the same. Um, you, I do highly recommend checking your vehicle's owner's manual to see what the vehicle is actually capable of towing. And then you're going to want to compare that with what the hitch is rated at. Take the lower of those two numbers just so you stay safe. Now some quick measurements here. From the center of the hitch pin to the furthest point of the rear fascia, we're looking about four and a half inches. And that's important to note when choosing accessories that fold up, like your car carriers or bike racks. Some of them uh, can get kind of close to the rear fascia, so you want to make sure that you're not going to scuff that in the process. But with that little bit, you should be okay on most of them, just something to keep in mind. Now as far as ground clearance goes, from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground is 11 inches. So I don't ever worry about this really making contact with the ground, but as you have some of your suspended accessories, as you go up an incline, those will kind of dip down. So you're going to want to make sure just if you are driving on an incline with your accessories loaded or off-road, you're going to want to make sure that you have that in mind. That way they're not making contact with the ground. Now as far as the installation goes, this one's pretty simple. You have to slightly enlarge a hole, so you may need something to kind of grind away just to kind of get your hardware in place. And then we use a fish wire technique to get the bolts in place. Now the good thing is, I'm here to show you every step of the way, and we're going to get your trailer hitch installed as we watch this video. So let's take a look at that now. To begin our installation, we're going to first start by taking out two Torx screws. They're going to be T15s, and these just go to the brackets that actually hold this portion of the bumper onto the rest of the fascia. So we're going to be removing these because this is going to allow us to actually put our hitch back up in here. So as we remove all of our hardware, we're going to want to make sure we have a nice place to store all these. It's going to make installation a lot easier. So you can see there's a few of them on here, but just to make sure you have the right ones, you're going to see the jut out here. Uh, so it's just going to be this one and the one on the other side that has that same plastic piece hanging out. So with those removed, you can see this is going to give us just enough to really get that hitch up. So the next thing we need to do is get our exhaust supported because we're going to be lowering this down to get it bolted up in place. So before we lower the exhaust, we're going to want to actually support it because once we take the exhaust hangers off, it's going to be allowing that to hang down and downstream it can actually cause some damage to the exhaust. So if you're doing this in your garage or on your driveway, I suggest getting a block of wood or something that you can rest the exhaust on. That way all that weight isn't hanging down. Uh, since I'm on a lift here, I'm going to be using just a cam buckle strap and this is just going to create a nice little cradle for our exhaust to hang down, but I can also support it. So there's going to be uh, three different exhausts 
hangers that we're gonna need to actually take down. This one's your normal, just regular isolator that we're gonna pry off. But these ones are actually on a bracket that bolts into weld nuts. So there's gonna be two 15 millimeter bolts. We're gonna get those removed. There's also gonna be two that are identical on the other side. So we'll get uh, all four bolts taken out and then we'll get our front forward isolator off and then we should have our exhaust drop down. Now the exhaust hangers on the back, even when you pull the bolts off, they actually have a little tab that holds them in place. So this isn't gonna drop down. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get this one uh, removed. And to do these, sometimes they can get a little bit tricky just because they get hot and they kind of get dust and dirt build up. So they can be a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna just spray a little bit of silicone on here. You can also use soapy water or a penetrating oil, just something to kind of help move that rubber along. And then just using this portion of the hanger you can use that to pry it off. Um, doesn't matter if it comes off the top or the bottom, whatever works. Um, but yeah, you should be able to, if you don't have a pry bar, you can use a flathead screwdriver and this one came off pretty easy. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead, we can grab our brackets here and I'm just gonna lift up to kind of get that tab off. Um, it's right here on the corner. So once you can see right here, this hole, the tab just fits in there. So you're just gonna kind of unhook it uh, I'm going to do the same on the other as well. So now we actually have a little bit of room to work. We have our exhaust hanging down and if you need to, you can actually kind of take these brackets and kind of move them down. Just kind of open this up a little bit more for us. So now we're going to need to enlarge our access holes and you're going to see this larger hole from the other ones. This is where we're going to feed our hardware. So we have our carriage bolt here. And as you can tell, it's just ever so slightly too wide. And we also have a spacer block that's gonna be going in there. So I'm gonna just go ahead and notch out these corners a little bit. I have a burr bit, uh, which is kind of like a grinding attachment for a drill. If you have a rotary tool like a Dremel, or uh, if you're careful with an angle grinder, basically you're just gonna want to get a nice little notch here and have this handy to test to make sure that it goes up in there. Yeah, and if you don't have any power tools to do that, a hand file, if you really kind of work at it, will also work. So uh, just be careful since you're under your car, you're gonna wanna make sure you wear safety glasses while doing this so you don't get metal in your eyes. So I've gone ahead and enlarged the hole. You can see it didn't take a whole lot and now I can actually get our carriage bolt in place as well as our spacer block. Now, before we put anything up, we're gonna actually want to make sure that this is flush so that the hitch can sit up against it. But also, I'm gonna coat it with just a little bit of spray paint for the raw metal there. We don't want that to turn into rust or corrosion long-term. So I'm just gonna put just a dab of spray paint on there. Um, so if you have clear, black, whatever works best for you, the hitch is gonna cover that up. So you just really wanna make sure that that metal is coated. That way moisture doesn't eat away at it. So now we're gonna to need to get our carriage bolt and spacer block into these three holes. And that's gonna create the studs for our hitch to mount up to. Now the best way to get our hardware in place is gonna be a fish wire technique. So taking our wire with the coil, I'm gonna go ahead and feed it up through the furthest hole, which is gonna be on the rear part of the vehicle. And I just put a slight bend in the wire and I'm gonna just feed it this way until I can catch that coil with my finger and I'll pull that through. Now sometimes it can kind of bounce around, so just take your time here. And once you get a hold of it, we'll just push this in. So now once you have that coiled end, uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't pull the wire all the way through. So if you need to, you can put a bend on this end here. That's just gonna kind of hold that in place. And from here, we're gonna feed our spacer block into the frame, just like that. And then we'll take our carriage bolt, and this will thread into that coiled portion. And then we can actually feed this in there as well. And you may have to kind of put it in at an angle, but once we're there, we can kind of just pull this through and jostle it around a bit to get that to drop in. Now we're gonna leave our wire on here. It's gonna make a lot easier install as we can feed this through the hitch when raising it up in place. It's also gonna keep this from going back in the frame rail. So now we're gonna do the same process on these two holes uh, and that's gonna also create our studs. So same process here and we're also gonna repeat that on the other side. So we'll go ahead and get all of our hardware in place. So now you're gonna wanna grab an extra set of hands to get the hitch in place. And what we're gonna be doing is feeding the core 
corresponding fish wires through the holes. Now you can see this circular one, this is not gonna get used. You're gonna be using just the three here. Now we're also gonna need to kind of get this to fit up in the bumper. So you might have to kind of move it around a little bit for it to work. So we're gonna go over the exhaust here. And this is gonna kind of help get this in place. Uh, same here, I'm gonna kind of just pull this back. And it's gonna be a little bit tricky here, but uh, with a little bit of moving, we should be able to get this to go through there. So if you kind of move the other side far over, it's gonna help a little bit here. We'll just have to get this over the muffler. There we are. We slide that. And now what we're gonna do is, now we can get our fish wires in place. And again, like I said, just kind of pull them through the corresponding holes. And you're gonna to wanna to also make sure that you have a nut handy, because what we're gonna do is raise it up. And once we get in place, we're gonna just hand thread one of them on there on each side, and that's gonna hold up the hitch and allow us to get the rest of the hardware up. So now we're gonna raise this up, and we should be able to get these to pull through. And that's why we still have the fish wire on here now. Just be careful, you don't wanna lose the fish wire in the process. But uh, once that's pulled down, you can take the pit fish wire off and just kind of hold that in place, either with the hitch or with your finger, just to not push that back up in the frame. And with some light turning, we should be able to get this to hand thread on. So now with that hand threaded on, it's gonna hold it up. And I can go ahead and do the same for all of our hardware. So now that they're hand tightened on, I'm gonna go ahead and snug them up using an impact. Now this is gonna be a 19 millimeter socket and I'm not gonna go too crazy on these cause I'm gonna go right back with a torque wrench to make sure that they're properly torqued. But this is gonna help kind of cinch that hitch up. So we'll go ahead and tighten them up. So now going back with my torque wrench, I've just used the torque settings that are in the instruction manual and we're gonna tighten them down to that spec. Now, if you need a torque wrench, we actually have them available here at E-Trailer, or you can generally rent them at an auto parts store, but this is gonna be important because it's gonna make sure that there's not too much stress on the threads, but also that it's not loose and going to loosen up over time. So we'll get this torqued down to the proper spec, and then we'll repeat that for all of the hardware. With the hitch tightened and torqued down into place, now we need to get our exhaust back up. And these brackets, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these are actually slid through those pins that were holding it up before. We'll just raise this in place, slide that into position, and then we can get our bolts in place and tighten those down. Now we'll put our forward facing exhaust isolator back in. And this one you can kind of just pry it in an angle, lift this up and it should kind of just slip over there again. Now take your supporting, uh, whatever you use to support your exhaust, you can take that off. So now we just need to get our two little torque screws back in place here. So with those two torque screws in place, that's gonna do it for the installation of our trailer hitch. And that was a look and installation of the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2020 GMC Terrain.